The National Park Service welcomes you to the Glenmont Estate, home of Thomas and Mina Edison, and a unit of the Thomas Edison National Historical Park. It is here, on this large estate in Llewellyn Park, that the Edisons raised their children, entertained friends, family, and business associates, and enjoyed wandering the grounds. It was a grand home for a great inventor. Edison purchased the estate as a wedding gift for his bride-to-be, Mina Miller, in 1886. The original owner, Henry Petter, spent over $250,000 to build and furnish Glenmont. However, it was soon discovered that the money had been embezzled from his employer, and the country estate was put on the market. Edison bought the 29-room mansion, fully furnished, and the 13 and a half landscaped acres for $125,000. The Edisons made Glenmont their home for the rest of their lives. The interior of Glenmont can be seen as three separate areas. The public rooms on the first floor used for entertaining, the family rooms on the second and third floors, and the servants areas, which included workspace and bedrooms. Let's take a look at the public areas first. After walking in the front door, Visitors to Glenmont found themselves in the entrance hall, which was designed to make a positive first impression of the house. The room looks much as it did when Edison first saw it in 1886, describing that, quote, when I entered this, I was paralyzed, to think that it was possible to buy a place like this. The idea fairly turned my head and I snapped it up. It is a great deal too nice for me, but it isn't half nice enough for my little wife here. Richly decorated with carved mahogany, oak, and stained glass windows, it gives a grand first impression of the home, even today. Mrs. Edison added her own personal touches, such as the portrait of Thomas Edison, but otherwise little has changed. On either side of the entrance hall were rooms designed to receive guests. The library, to the right, was seldom used by the Edisons, and retains more of the original furniture and finishes than any other room in the house. It includes the stenciled walls and ceiling, shelves of books, the table and armchairs, and many decorative objects. Guests of the Edisons would usually be shown to the reception area to the left of the entrance hall. Mina enjoyed this room, and it is here that she would serve afternoon tea, meet with friends, or listen to her children play the organ. Adjoining the reception room is the drawing room, a more formal entertaining space. To the left of the entranceway is a portrait of Madeline Edison Sloan, the eldest child of Thomas and Mina Edison. Madeline was married in the drawing room in June 1914. The large mirror was covered with a tapestry and the furniture removed to accommodate the ceremony. 
The reception was held on the front lawn. Mina, whose portrait hangs on the far wall, loved to entertain in this room. Dinner guests would gather in the drawing room before being invited to the dining room. Mina held formal recitals by professional musicians and receptions in the drawing room, such as the gathering of the Daughters of the American Revolution or visits by Herbert Hoover and Helen Keller. Madeline also remembered less formal gatherings like when her uncles and friends from Yale gathered around the piano to sing. The dining room was a very busy area. The family ate all their meals here. In an interview, Edison once said that he came down to breakfast at 7, ate, read the paper, smoked a cigar, and went to the laboratory at 7.30. As Thomas and Mina advanced in years, they took breakfast in their bedroom, but lunch and dinner were always eaten in the dining room. Dinner parties and family gatherings could sometimes be quite large. When the table was extended fully, it could seat up to 30 people. The Edisons entertained distinguished guests such as Charles Lindbergh, Woodrow Wilson, and Henry Ford as well as many of Mina's extended family. She was one of 11 children, and often there were large gatherings around the holidays. The den was used for a variety of activities. On some occasions, particularly family events, guests would move to the den after dinner a less formal entertaining space than the drawing room. When the children were young, they used the den as a stage for plays, with the adult audience seated in the dining room. The den was also the scene of dancing and piano lessons and the family Christmas tree during the holidays. The room was decorated by the Edison family with favorite mementos and souvenirs. Some are gifts from foreign dignitaries to honor Thomas Edison, such as the pen and ink set by Krupp, the arms manufacturer, and the jade vases from the Tsar of Russia. Others are family vacation souvenirs, like the wood statue purchased by the children in 1911 because the figure looked so much like their father. Let's head upstairs to the family rooms. Thomas and Mina lived in Glenmont for 45 years. The master bedroom was where Madeline, Charles, and Theodore were born in 1888, 1890, and 1898, respectively. It was also in this room that Thomas Edison passed away on October 18, 1931, surrounded by his family. Mina continued to live in the house until her death in 1947. The room at the north or opposite end of the hall was a guest room in later years, but was a nursery when the children were young. The other bedrooms were used by various Edison children, guests, and family members through the years. Thank you.
Edison family, the most important room in the house may have been the family living room on the second floor. This is where the family would relax, much like our family rooms of today. As you enter the family living room, on the left is the desk used by Edison, where he would often work long into the night. Mina used the desk on the right. Besides running the household, Mina was also active in a variety of church, charity, and social organizations. The living room was also a place for the family to spend time together, whether it was reading Sunday newspapers, researching a project, or playing board games. Madeline recalled playing Parcheesi with her father, whom she claims, quote, bent the rules a bit when he was losing. Theodore Edison recalled being drafted to comb the books in the living room for research information for one of his father's projects. The children would mark the pages and bring the books over to Edison at his desk. Charles was probably the best known Edison child, serving as Secretary of the Navy under Franklin Roosevelt and Governor of New Jersey during World War II. Like many living rooms today, family photos adorn tables and walls, knickknacks are scattered around, and favorite reading materials line the shelves. The last section of the house, but certainly not the least, was the servants' area. Typical of the time period, a staff of servants was employed to keep the house in order and running smoothly. Several staff members lived on the third floor, while others lived in town. The gardener lived over the potting shed adjacent to the greenhouse, and the chauffeur lived over the garage, a separate building on the lower lawn. The house was designed so staff could move up and down the servant stairs without being seen by visiting guests. In the servant's dining room, staff could relax, take their meal, listen to the phonograph, or play the piano. The laundry room, especially in winter or on rainy days, could be crowded. Clothes would have been washed and normally hung to dry in the laundry yard just outside the servant's entrance. However, during bad weather, they were washed and dried in this room. Central to the servant's area is the kitchen. All meals were prepared here, for family and staff alike. Meals for the family were moved from the kitchen to the butler's pantry and then served in the dining room. The adjoining butler's pantry is also where dishes and silverware were washed and stored. Mina used the term home executive to describe her position supervising the household. While Mina planned events and menus, the cooking and serving was left to her staff. Glenmont was an estate. The entire property was used by the family and staff. The barn, far away from the home and hidden behind trees, housed chickens, a cow or two, and the occasional pig or other farm animal. The garage, made of Edison Portland cement, housed the family cars. Today, you can see the 1922 Model T Ford that chauffeured Edison to and from work, and the Detroit electric cars that were used primarily by Mina. The garage also housed a gas pump, electric car charging station, and a turntable to easily move the cars.
The potting shed today serves as a visitor orientation area and is adjacent to the greenhouse. In the greenhouse are some of Mina's favorite plants. Palms, agave cactus, roses, and orchids. Around the grounds, the family might host a party, such as Madeline's wedding reception, or the 1929 Edison Scholarship Competition. The children would play games or have a picnic. Today, Thomas and Mina are buried behind their beloved home, Glenmont. Glenmont represents so much more than just a house. Walking through the home and learning the stories of the Edisons, one gains a better understanding of the Edison family. Enjoy Glenmont. We hope it speaks to you.